www.jul.com. Däck och följan online direkt hem till din dörr eller närmaste verkstad. En state that is caring, sophisticated and has a nice design. The Volvo V90. In Sweden you see a lot of these cars. The Volvos. Well, mostly the SUVs. But these are state cars, the V60 and this V90. I think they are the style icons in their segment. There is some low-key attitude about them that I really like because they don't really stick out. And that is something that fits that ordinary Swede a lot. And I think many others that don't want to be braggy in some way, but even so want to tell the world that, you know, I'm well off. And now we drive in pure. So we drive in all electric, fully charged, and it says uh, 67 kilometers. Combined, it should do about 89 kilometers, which is good. That's a good range. And we push that gear lever, that nice glass Orefors Sweden gear lever, into um, B, which is um, regenerative braking. And that is like one pedal drive because it's very effective, it's very strong. When you let off, well, it pulls you down to a stop. So it really works as a one pedal drive. And I think that's really, really good in a plug-in hybrid because they usually don't have that strong regenerative capacities. This one it really has, so I like that. It's maybe a bit on the strong side because you need to push the accelerator a bit harder to get it going. So it's really on the uh, charge bar here. When you pull away in pure, you know, it's strong enough. 18.8 kilowatt hours of uh, battery power. It provides a bit more horsepower to the rear axle because it's got a third layer of cells. Before it had 11.6 kilowatt hours, but now 18.8. Eight. So strong enough pack for both performance and range. These four different drive modes, you got hybrid. Well, it works seamlessly between the electric motor and the petrol engine. So there's an indicator here which shows that that's where the petrol comes in. So you know where to let off your foot to not get that engine kicking in if you want, just to drive along with the electric. The aesthetics and the design doesn't feel out of date. This one in this crystal white, which really sparkles, has a very deep, nice color to it, and it looks very good to the black nuances of the car, which runs across here on the grill, down here, the side mirrors and the rails on the roof. The front looks really good. I really like these long shaped headlights here with that Thor hammer. This big grill almost runs all across of the front. 20 inch rims with some silver and some black like that as well. Really think that that sets the tone together with this white color. And talking about tires, a question to all you car nerds out there. Do you know the size tires has got with the road surface? Comment in the section below. The rear of the car looks very strong. I think that on an estate, they've really done it well. It really follows all the way up, down, and then it just connects to the middle of the car, which I think looks great. I like the rear lights on this car. Something that I also like a lot is when you open the door, it's really quiet. It's soft, but it's strong. It really feels durable. And also when you close it, you know, you can compare it to the very, very best. And I think that that says a lot about the quality of a car and also the typing. It's very classic, everything. It's just like you don't really take note of it because it's such an ordinary car, but maybe that's the recipe of just melting together. So these cars sells very good. And uh, for the Swede, this is really Swedish steel because you know what you get. You get good ride comfort, you get well-built cars, and that embracing feeling of security when you drive this car, well, that's what Volvo has really ingested from the very early start. And when that engine kicks in, well, you get that little growl of that two liter engine, which produces about 250 plus horsepower do a kick down. Yeah, it has a rather nice sound to it. It's rather dampened. You can't hear it that much, but uh, it's there. So the acceleration is, it's good. You know, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.5 seconds. That's quick, but it's not hair raising in any way. 
But this car, it works really well when pushing it and stressing it a bit, but in a very, very maneuverable, nice way. Nice body control without being upset in any way. So I like how it works. It's very predictable. It's got this very good body control. But the best thing about this car is when you get out on the motorways and on some longer runs, because this is a comfortable cruiser. It's very quiet. The cabin is very quiet. It's not that much sound from anywhere. It's mostly the tire noise. That's it. Otherwise, it runs very, very smoothly and it feels extremely stable. I'm very, very impressed by this uh, suspension. I think it's among the best in its class. So this is the uh, T6 Recharge version. It's got a two liter four cylinder engine and then it's got an 18.6 kilowatt hour battery and together it produces 350 horsepower. So it's rather brisk. And it's also got the all wheel drive system. So you get around wherever you need. And with that e-boost as it's called and the four wheel drive system, it does zero to 100 in 5.5 seconds. And then it's limited to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. So uh, it could go a lot faster, but that's the way it is. 180 kilometers, that's what you get. But of course, all this working together is not that thirsty. 0.8 liters per 100 kilometers. That's rather good for a plug-in hybrid. And claimed range on pure electric is 87 kilometers. And around town, 106 kilometers. So on this one, it's also an updated onboard charger. 6.4 kilowatts. So uh, you can charge it up a bit quicker than on that 3.7 ordinary one. And this car is rather quick, but it's not the car that you would uh, thrash around too hard, even though when thrashing it around, it feels very competent. It sticks to the road rather good. And you need to provoke it really, really hard before you get it unsettled. So it has some great handling, but this is a car to relax in because I must say that this air suspension on this car, it's really, really lean and very, very comforting to all the riders. The trunk is all right, it's not as big as an E-Class, but you get 560 liters of boot capacity, and that's good. And you get about 1500 liters if you fold the rear seats. So there's three trim packs for this one. It's the Core, it's the Plus, and then it's the Ultimate. So let's do a uh, launch here. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.5 seconds. It hasn't got any paddle shifters or anything, or any launch control. So just uh, kick down. And it's fast off the line. That is sporty. So it's rather fun. It's not accelerating in any way. But together with this uh, great suspension, it just feels very compliant all the time. So you feel very secure in the way it does it. So it can put on its sporty shoes, but it's not what it's really meant to do. It's on the SPA platform. You got the V90, the V60, you got the XC60, the XC90 SUV, and also the beautiful saloon cars, the S60 and the S90. And I really like that S90. I think that's a real, you know, almost Swedish embassy car in some way. When you know that a car has been around for a while and you know that there hasn't been that many changes, well, you know, that's, that's modern luxury, you know, aesthetics that doesn't run out of time and that still works. And I find that that is a real plus. Keeping that is also elegance and luxury and uh, also extremely competitive. So design is so important. But not just the inside, also the exterior aesthetics of this car. It's just that you see these around that much that they blend in and they just disappear. It's not like you stop and you watch and like, wow, that's, that's a good looking car. You need to think a bit longer before you uh, can acknowledge that because it is, it is a real good looking car. Set it alongside a Mercedes E-Class or a BMW 5 Series or an Audi A6. As always, that's personal taste. But I think this has a real great elegance that, well, might be uh, the best looker of them all. And I think that's really strange because I'm not that big of a Volvo fan, I've never been. In some way, I don't know why. I always uh, like to approach the Germans a bit more, not because they're better in any way or something like that. There's just something that I felt felt a bit more, um, I don't know, glamorful. But when living with the car for a couple of days and just uh, soaking up the Volvo experience, I 
there is something special about it of being a bit discreet but having all this build quality the luxury and this nice refinement of how it drives it just becomes a very very complete car sitting down in here well you can really feel that they've set the tone of feeling scandinavian my gosh you know it looks like you get into one of these showrooms where they sell Scandinavian or maybe Danish designed luxury furnitures. First of all, this uh, gray wool blend performance, as they call it, this uh, material. I mean, these seats, they look like dentist chairs, but when you see them with leather, they aren't as inspiring as with this uh, light gray textile wool. They look stunning. I've always thought that they are a bit hard every time I get into a Volvo, but they are shaped around your body in a uh, perfect way. But still, they are a bit hard, but at the same time, it's a very soft car to drive. So why not have some uh, middle way in the, uh, in the seats? And as you start to feel the materials all around here, it feels very premium. Well, they got some of this glossy, which is so popular, but there's not that much of it. I mean, look at this. I think this is some recycled um, type of uh, wood, or if it's this drift wood that they called it before, together with this aluminium Bowers and Wilkins. It looks just so elegant and tasteful. And you get the same type of material here as in the seats. Buttons feel just good. We've seen this for a couple of years now, but at the same time in here as well. A little updated, maybe a bit quicker. You know, when you get into uh, maps, you get into Google Maps, so they got Google integrated in here, and I think that is really good because that works right off the bat every time. And it works rather good, you know, to scroll around here. Maybe not the quickest one, but it's good. And the graphics, yeah, uh, maybe a bit dated. It feels like it's a bit torn in the uh, writing. And here's also a little Swedish touch, Orefors Sweden, which makes uh, glass, vases, and all this, a very old, famous company. So that's a very uh, solid piece of glass here. And that is a luxury touch. Some storage here, I would like to have some more storage. Uh, don't really know where to put my phone. Um, that doesn't look that good in the cup holders. But um, apart from that, it's all right. Steering wheel, very good to hold, very good grip. The buttons here are maybe not the prettiest, a bit bulky, a bit big. And you start the engine by switching this little knob here. I think the graphics here are really good. You get your navigation in front of you here. You see where the power and charge and all of that pops up. You also got that regen if you push it twice and uh, very simple to just push to get it into drive to get it into reverse park i like it you also got your panoramic roof so it's minimalistic it doesn't really arouse you in here but as you behold it it's very elegant and i think it has its own look just like in the polestars which i also like a lot very discreet but with a modern nice touch so i think they should keep that keep that for the future don't do too much with it because I think this ages well to me this would look good in any new car that would just pop up now head into the back seat well good space in here I think got here well you can put that up if you don't want the Sun to shine in too much you can also lock that door that button you got some heated seats back here and the seats, they are good. They give you support. They're not super, super soft. Stretch out your uh, knees rather good. They bolt up rather good. So you got some um, support. They're more on the uh, stiffer side, but, um, but they feel good. So you're a bit cocooned here and you'll get some more uh, air and space, of course, when you uh, push that sunshade back. So that panoramic roof gives you a lot of light. And by being this bigger one, the V90 or the S90, well, or the XC90 for that matter, a maturity that really stands out a bit more and the model feels proud in some way. So this is a very good, big premium estate car 
which takes your family and does everything that you need practically 90% of the time dropping them off to school getting out on highways going for some trips it's practical this environment in here it's not squeaky it's quiet it's soothing it's so comfortable to drive and it's very predictable you can put on its sporty shoes and drive it a bit harder and it works it doesn't get upset in any way and it's so cool that it's got a couple of years on it but still they refurbish it a bit with the interior details you can push and hit it and you feel that everything is just well put together so it's premium it's real premium it's a very very good car i like it didn't think i would like it that much mm -hmm.